Hello and welcome to Rust Build School. This is the Rhinoceros. The Rhinoceros is a 2x2 extended into a clan base that I designed one wipe when I didn't really feel like making a multi-TC design. It actually turned out really well in my opinion and my team members really enjoyed the base and they said the biggest downfall of the base is that it's ugly. That's the only downfall which I feared they wouldn't like the upkeep. Let's go ahead and take a tour of the base. So here out front, you have the first airlock. The first airlock features two windows to see if you're getting door camp, a sheet metal door, and a garage door to the jump up, which holds a shotgun trap and two drop boxes. On top of that, we jump up to the first jump up, which leads us into the base. Once we do these, we are at the third floor of the base, which leads us to an interesting door on the right, which we will come back to. On the left, we open this up to a first locker in case we need a kit immediately. And we have another locker and the repair bench. There should be two small boxes here. The research table with a large box underneath. And on the left, we have the way up and more storage. In here, we have a primary storage room. And on the left, we have another lesser storage room to give the most storage ability possible. Over here, we have another small storage room. On this ladder, we can go up to the next floor, but let's go down into the core first. Down one floor, we're on the second floor of core. We're met by two more garage doors and all of the furnaces, which are very bright. We have another primary loot room. We have a garage door that leads us to another jump down with the tier two and bare rugs, leading us to another garage door. A bed, an armored door, and an oil refinery meet us here. On this, we have a vending machine, which we can store loot in. And if they raid it, it despawns the loot. And here we have the tier three, a locker and primary storage. Inside of primary storage, there's also a high wall window securing TC and a furnace for extra storage. If we leave the core, we go up, go through the ladder hatch. This brings us back to the third floor where the entrance to the core is over there. Up here, we have access to the fourth floor blocked by a garage door. When we jump out, we are met by three garage doors. The garage door on the left leads to another one. Here we have one respawn bedroom for raid defense. Over here we have a window that looks out over the raid area, and we have a 360 shooting floor. Up here, we have an open garage door that should all be shut, but they're not. This chute has a shotgun trap, and this is the chute that goes to the main entrance. So the very first garage door that we saw on third floor is actually a chute to take us straight to shooting floor the moment we get in the base. As this can help you if someone was chasing you or fighting you as you're running to your base, you can quickly gain access to the roof. Or if you're being raided and you're on the third floor, you can quickly ascend to the top floor. Inside of the shooting floor's core, we have the electrical room and a turret covering it. Over here, we have access to the left side shooting. We have all of the embrasures and door frames for peaks down. Over here on this side, we have the same thing, peaks. On the front side, we have a jump up from the 360 shooting floor. Down here, these, you jump on the box and you can get up instantly. These work really, really well. These peaks are amazing around the base and secure to make sure that you will not be losing sight of the enemy raiding you. On this floor, the continuation, we have mixing tables. And we also have a final respawn bedroom for emergencies. This base can hold five respawn rooms if you put two beds in core, two beds up here, and use this as another respawn room instead of mixing tables. Back at the shooting floor, we have a ladder hatch that leads us to the mini garage. Up here, you can store your mini copter when you come back from flying around killing people. And out here, we also have a minor shooting floor with low walls and concrete barriers for cover. So you can peek out on people and take kills from long range. And we also have a turret covering the windmill in case someone tries to get on the roof. This helps deter them. The upkeep of the base is a little bit pricey. It comes in at 10,000 stone and 10,000 metal frags and around 100 high qual. For a small group of three to four, this is almost nothing though, as if all three of us went out and farmed, the base was hardly a problem to upkeep. We had way more material than this during our wipe. We had two full boxes of metal frag extra. I don't know if we were just lucky the wipe we used this or if we were just having a really good time farming that wipe. But that is the upkeep. 
before we get into building the base, I wanted to take a moment to show the footprint of the 2x2 and the expansion so that way you can get an idea of the area you need to build so that way you can assess where you can and can't build this in an actual white. The starter core is just a slightly modified 2x2. Two two. In order to build it, all you need to do is place a square foundation as low as possible and build three square foundations raised up from it. Go ahead and add a triangle foundation off of that square and add two triangles off of the lower squared, followed by one triangle here. Go ahead and upgrade everything except the lowered foundation to stone. You want to remove this lowered foundation. You should have something that looks like this. After you've got that, you can go ahead and place the walls to seal off your base. So go ahead and place them like so. And then you need two door frames. You can leave this front door frame wood for now. Upgrade the rest to stone. After you've accomplished that, make sure you have two doors on your base because you wouldn't want someone to come in while you're building. And then we're going to place the TC into this corner on the honeycomb. Now this can be a little bit tricky. You're basically taking the line on the foundation and you want to measure the TC back from it just a little bit. So right here looks about good, so I'm going to go ahead and place my TC. If you don't feel comfortable with placing the TC on that square because you're afraid you won't make it fit correctly, you can just place it straight back. So just go all the way back into the corner and place it like this. That way you can still fit your window frame here. Because if you place your furnace into here, you can actually place a furnace back far enough that you can still build a window frame. And that's an extra storage with the TC. So that is incredibly useful to have. Make sure you upgrade everything on that triangle and have a window frame here. Now you can access the TC and furnace from there. So you should have something that's looking like this right now. Don't forget to add a ceiling over your airlock and upgrade it. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is add a wall here, add two door frames. We're going to want to put a ceiling here, here, and here. So three ceilings leaving the space over the no foundation having no ceiling either. Upgrade everything to stone here. Then we're going to place a half wall and place a ceiling off of it. Then we're going to place that ceiling there and place this ceiling here. Remove these two twig ceilings and upgrade these two to stone. Now eventually you're going to get an oil refinery. An oil refinery will fit underneath this ceiling into this space here. I personally love the fact of having an oil refinery inside of my base. It is one of the greatest things you can do in Rust because you don't have to have it outside. You don't have to watch it. It can run while you're away from base and no one can get to this unless they're raiding you. Next, you're going to want to place doors onto this and eventually you're going to need a garage door because you can't seal this. So for now, just seal that off with a double door. This will prevent anyone from getting in and you can't get out that way, which is why we have this entrance. Behind these double doors is your first storage room. You have access to the TC and furnace there, so you can smelt the metal to get all of this first. If you want to add many more furnaces, you can go ahead and just place those down right here for now, out here. Place all of your bags in tier one in this space for now. So generally bags here in a line and tier one here. And that is the complete starter shelf for the base. If you want to expand immediately, you can go ahead and add the second floor access by adding these walls here followed by a door frame and a ceiling with a double door. Make sure you upgrade everything. Then go ahead and add in a double door here. And then that can take away the requirement for this to give you roof access. Now you can access your roof early on and this is the complete starter core. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is add honeycomb. To add honeycomb, it's just like any other two by two. You'll go ahead and place triangles on all of the squares making sure you have a triangle on every side. Then you're just going to place walls all the way around on every open triangle. Then make sure you seal them off with a roof. And then you can place in a triangle foundation on each side of the honeycomb. And you can also place a ceiling here. Now, 
A very, very, very important thing to keep in mind is that if you want metal honeycomb eventually, do not place this wall. If you place this wall on the honeycomb, you've locked yourself out of getting into that inner honeycomb. So if they were to raid straight on that, these would be stone walls, which means if this was metal, it's pointless. So make sure you upgrade all of your inner honeycomb before you put the outer walls on. If you put the outer walls on first, you're sealing yourself to be stone honeycomb inside. So I like to get those walls upgraded immediately before I seal these. Once I've sealed everything, I can continue working on the base. So your base should look something like this once it's honeycomb, just a standard 2x2 with honeycomb with roof access. Before we get too far along in this build, I want to go ahead and show things in their final form. So from this point onward, I'm going to upgrade the first floor core, and then as I expand the base, it'll all be in its final form. So I'm going to use the material it should be in after this. So I'm going to now upgrade the core. So we want to remove this door, and we want to add a garage door on both of these sockets. We also want to add a new socket here with another garage door for now. That will eventually become an armored double door. So now, you want your main loot room to be fully armored, so you'll have to probably pick up a box to reach that back wall. Make sure you have all of your boxes placed before you upgrade this window. I like to also add barbecues and small boxes once I get garage doors. So I like to come right here and get a barbecue to fit here. It's seeming to be a little weird. There it is box is a little bit further forward but that's why I like to do it after I get the garage door so that way it doesn't really matter. Now depending on if you're doing this base as a solo or in a trio you may not want these hyper efficient boxes here. Most of the time I do not put these in because my clan mates will complain about them. Team members often don't like millions of little boxes so keep that in mind when you're basing. Upgrade the entire TC into armored. Make sure you get the foundation. The foundation can be a little tricky if you don't have flight. So that's something to keep in mind early on. Maybe don't place this window frame until you're ready to upgrade everything in there. That'll allow you to reach the walls from the inside and also allow you to place the ceiling into armored as well. After that, you want to make sure the entire core is sheet metal at minimal. When upgrading the starter core, make sure you do not upgrade this wooden door frame to metal. You can upgrade it to stone if you're fine with soft siding it out later, because we will need to remove this doorway right here. But the airlock, you can make it metal. The ceiling, I recommend making all of the ceilings in the starter core armored, as it just makes the top down raid cost much more expensive. On the outside of your starter base, the high qual wall for the TC is exposed, and if people see that high qual wall, they may be tempted to raid that. So I recommend placing a triangle foundation here with two walls on it, and then a ceiling, just so people can't see that high qual wall from the ground. That will keep them from just instantly going to raid that as fast as they can. Now that the starter core is completed, let's go ahead and add the second floor. So to add the second floor, all you need to do is place walls on the 2x2 and seal it off. Then place a floor tile here and here. And then we want to add a half height floor tile here because this is a storage room. So place a wall frame here on the bottom. And this only needs to be stone as a garage door is only three rockets. Then you need to place a floor frame here. And this also only needs to be stone as a ladder hatch is only one C4. Now you may not have access to a ladder hatch immediately, so you can do a furnace jump up here in the corner and jump up here to the next floor, but since we're doing this the final form, I have a ladder hatch. Generally I like to use this floor as a furnace floor just because of that, so I line this entire floor with furnaces to cook all of our metal so I can produce the whole white. You also want to add another floor frame here that also only needs to be stone, and then place a garage door into it. You can then place your furnaces here all along the side. So the next thing you're going to want to do so we can expand to the third floor and entrance is come up top and you're going to want to add the honeycomb now to the second floor. So make sure you have the ceilings metal so that way if your honeycomb is metal you have metal ceilings in there or if you think you will. If you plan to only make this base out of stone and never go metal don't worry about it. But I always build out of metal so I'm now going to add the honeycomb here. We'll just place it in here like this. All of these nice tiles. Now on this side, so if you place the ladder hatch and followed everything correctly, 
When you come up, it's the side that your storage room is on. You wanna make sure that you don't place honeycomb on that front wall. So you want two triangles and do not place this wall right here. If you place the wall right there, you will mess up your entrance into the base. So be sure not to place that wall. On this side, we're just gonna seal it off and we're gonna go ahead and place ceilings all the way around. And now we're ready to expand onto the third floor. Your base should look something like this right now. Your entrance is still stone, but we're gonna fix that up on the third floor here. On the right of the entrance, you should have that open wall gap for the entrance. So just make sure you have that gap there and that door there. For the third floor, you wanna look where your storage room is and go right above it and build another storage room. So right there, we have our storage room. Then you wanna come over here and expand this honeycomb like this. And this honeycomb we're just going to have as pure honeycomb, so we'll go ahead and fill that in. On this side, we're going to wrap it around and place a wall like that. You should have something that looks like this currently, and you can also add two walls here and here. Let's go ahead and add the door frames in real quick. So we have a door frame here and here, two here, one on the storage room, and two on the ladder hatch with one on the side. Your third floor should look something like this. Let's go ahead and turn our attention to the entrance of the base now as that is part of the third floor. Now is the time to soft side the front door of your base out and delete it. Then you wanna place a full wall in there on sheet metal, then place another wall that matches your external honeycomb. And then to the right side of where your door was, you wanna place a stone triangle followed by a square and another triangle with another square then place two walls, two windows, and a doorway. Place a square floor and two triangle floors. Then add a half height jump up. Go ahead and remove that. Then jump up, you can jump up here, add a square floor, add those two walls and remove the floor. The floor just helps you get those placements down easily. Then let's go ahead and add a wall frame here, jump up here, add a wall on top of the floor frame, then go here, add a half wall, add another jump up. So what we're doing is just creating a jump up path, add a door frame there, and now we're at third floor. So up here we can add a temporary ceiling to let us place these walls down very easily, remove that ceiling, place in a new ceiling, make this metal, and you also wanna add in ceilings here and here. Do not place a ceiling here on this tile. For now, we want to place a door frame here and here, and one there, and seal this off with a door or garage door for now. So this will be an addition later to the base. So for now, we just want to keep it sealed off because it's going to be a roof access. Next, we're going to want to place ceilings through all of this, seal off the third floor entirely. Over here, you don't want to put a ceiling right here in this slot either, as it is the next floor jump up. Then you can fully seal off this side and seal off this loot room here. For this loot room over here, add a half height shelf. And the same thing on this side. You want to add a half height shelf and then remove it. And then we'll go ahead and seal this off with a garage door on both sides and as well as one on this loot room. If you have trouble getting this one to place, you might have to just play with it until you get the right angle. It's a little bit weird. I'm not sure what causes it. It's just a little weird. All of this should be garage doors through here, garage door there, as well as one there. Also make sure you seal off the honeycomb and your third floor should look something like this. You should have two holes in the ceiling this one, we'll go ahead and build up another wall high and seal it off just like that. For the fourth floor of the base, the first thing you need to do is add a square tower on the opposite side. So over there, we have a square tower for our entrance. Over here, we just need to go ahead and build a square foundation followed by three walls with a ceiling on top and just keep climbing this up until we're level with the floor. Make sure the ceilings are metal if you want to make sure your entire base is upgraded, so you should upgrade these as you go. Once you have that, we can go ahead and start on the fourth floor of the base. To start on the fourth floor, come to the ladder hatch and go over to your jump up, which is right here, build a wall, place a ladder, go ahead and climb up and jump over. Then you can build this wall here and extend it like this. 
on this side you want to place a window frame and as well as here you want to place a window frame go ahead and place three door frames now this entire floor can be stone if you so choose I will go ahead and make certain components stone for the sake of showing in the tutorial for the lowest upkeep price and splitting I prefer to make everything metal if I can eventually and it is fairly easy to get that much farm later in the wipes so you just want to build little ramps like this on each side so place two walls above those door frames place a roof like so so from the window you have three door frames a roof and two walls that mimics on both sides and then we want to place a ramp here and a ramp here now it is possible to upgrade this to metal before anything else as this gives you a much wider peak area you can peek through this right here and you can peek below it you can peek all the way from back here and get angles under it the metal ramp is very different when it comes to the stone only having one way of peeking and maybe you want that so you have to consider what kind of peak you want now we can continue on upgrading so we'll just go ahead and wrap all the way around and connect the walls this is a loot room here this normally is where I put my electrical room, so I like to seal all this up with a garage door there. This right here is normally another bedroom spawn. I keep this wall a solid wall and two door frames right here and here. These can be stone as well, just because garage doors don't need a metal frame. So the only thing that needs a metal frame is an armored door. So keep that in mind if for some reason you have that many armored doors you want to add. Add in door frames here and here and now we can go ahead and seal off the entire roof with metal so all of these seal them off you can go armored if you have that much high qual but more than likely the high qual would be very expensive and you don't want to waste it here just do metal roofing there we go now to get up to the next floor the way up is going to be jumping on this ramp and you're going to need to add a small box on the ramp so right about even with the door Add a small box right there you can get on the ledge of it and jump up it can be a little confusing at first but if you place the box a little further back and you just practice the jump you can get it every single time and always get to your top floor consistently finish off the fourth floor just add in the garage doors into the frames you can add another frame here if you would like sometimes I do and don't add this one it really just depends on how many garage doors you want to add to your upkeep every garage door makes yourself way more defended this is normally a bedroom here i'll come back at the end of the video and show all of the furnishing throughout the base so now for the fifth floor we can go ahead and seal off this chute here like so so open it here seal that and place a door frame and place a garage door you also want to place a frame here at this jump up and these can be stone once again they don't have to be metal make sure you have a frame here on this one as well that just serves as a defense so if someone is into this floor or the top floor they still just don't have free movement between the two floors so if you open that up you can jump up and this is going to be the shooting floor which is where this ramp comes into play so now if we drop down here we can see that we're at the very main entrance of the base so we want to place ladders climbing up this side I like to do it with two ladders so I like to space them equally so that way we can jump out so now we've got a chute that goes from the main entrance of the base so the moment you get up your jump ups you can get to your shooting floor this is exceptionally useful so let's go ahead and add in the shooting floor so all we're going to do is add triangles off of the two by two here and this gives us a very good shooting floor now i'm going to go back to stone all of this can be stone there's really no reason to make your shooting floor metal unless you just have an overflow of metal which can happen seal that off with a wall there and seal this off with a wall here and here place a single doorway there and there with one here and then this can be metal again face them this way you can rotate this wall outward if you want to keep this loot room secure which I prefer to do add another doorway it can be stone and seal that off this just offers an extra room up here on the top floor in case you need more room or in case you need defense. Now these can be metal here as well, but it doesn't overall matter. So I'm going to leave them stone for the sake of upkeep, leaving this metal. So now we'll just go ahead and add a floor frame here. 
This will serve as an entrance to the garage or roof, depending on how you build your base. Seal that off. And then we need to add roofs over the shooting floor, which we'll do here. And now we need to place door frames and we need to make sure they're all placed from the left facing towards the next. So just always place them to your left so that way you always have the door facing the correct direction. After that, we'll go ahead and place in the small door. Open it on up. This one faces like this and like this. To finish off the shooting floor, add embrasures to all of the windows facing inward and add siren lights right above the door frame. This will prevent people from boosting into the base with a duo or if they can do it solo. If you place embrasures on the inside of the window, it prevents them from being splashed with rockets in the chance that someone would want to do that. Generally that won't happen, so place your embrasures however you like to see them, and then make sure you just have one on every single window. To finish off the shooting floor, go ahead and add sheet metal doors into these sockets here and a garage door into this socket. You can add further doors here, one here and here if you would like. That just secures your base even more. Personally, I prefer to keep this one a single doorway as well. On the very top of your base above the top ladder hatch, you're likely going to want a heli garage. So in order to add the heli garage, all you need to do is seal off the side that the ladder hatch is on, add two wall frames on each side, and two walls. Then seal this off with ceilings. I recommend making these metal, but those do not have to be. And then come with low walls and come to this side, opposite of the garage door. Leave these two blank, then place a line of low walls here, then leave these two blank, and place that you're leaving the entrances to your mini copter garage blank because landing the mini copter is a little bit difficult but is purely doable add in your garage doors and you have the mini garage completed if you happen to get a concrete barricade you can come outside your heli garage and place this one at an angle right here next to the garage door this just gives you a little bit more cover if you're up here on the roof and need something to hide behind or if you jump off the mini because your pilot crashes or if you're getting shot at while you're on the mini and you want to engage quickly, you can use these as cover to help you fight the battle. The last addition to the roof is the windmill. On top of your heli garage, you can add four door frames, two high, or you can take this as high as you want, whatever your stability lets you do, place a ceiling, take your windmill and place it on down. I'm gonna go ahead and place a ceiling for me to stand on because placing windmills while flying is a little difficult. So there we go, we've got a windmill now, and the windmill is on the very top of the base. I just realized I never finished the airlock, so you wanna have a sheet metal door here with two metal windows on each side, strengthened glass work or high qual depending. Place a garage door here and a garage door here on the jump ups, and then all of that is secure, your airlocks are in place. Everything is done except the honeycomb now. So to finish up the honeycomb, we can just come on with triangle foundations and a square and another triangle. Now, this is once again important to consider if you want this to be stone or metal, because once you seal this off, you lose access to the inner walls. So if you wanted all this to be metal, you're going to need to upgrade it before you place the front walls on, and then you're gonna wanna seal it off. And you wanna do that all the way around the base on each side. We'll go ahead and place them in here. This one's our TC corner, so one's already there. Place these. That wall is soft side, do not do that. All right, seal that up. Then we'll go ahead and place the ceilings on this one. After you've sealed that off, you're gonna wanna land up here. Now doing this in vanilla can be a little difficult, but you're gonna wanna take a roof, place it there, jump on top of the roof and have your building plan place a twig floor right here. Then equip a triangle roof and walk towards the edge of this. If you get it just right, you'll eventually see the roof turn blue and you can place the roof down very easily. Then delete that ceiling and there you go. This is gonna be the honeycomb on the base. 
on top of our other honeycomb, of course. This is just, it helps the base look a little bit nicer. Um, that was the biggest complaint from my team members, where they thought the base looked really ugly. They really, really liked the base overall, but didn't like how it looked. And that's completely understandable, because it is kind of a thick, weird base, but I kind of like the way it looks. It looks cool in a weird way. So we just gotta place these down on all the sides, which can be tedious, but it is worth doing. Because it also helps prevent people from just laddering up easier. Not really. Mostly just for looks. You could place metal barricades here if you really wanted to, but that looked even worse. And um, base aesthetic is actually something that's kind of neat. If your base looks really cool, maybe someone won't raid you for that. I don't know. The very final piece of honeycomb, if you want to add it, is a triangle foundation here with walls going up the center and then capping off at the shooting floor. This is completely optional, but it is kind of worth adding because this is one wall and then they can splash two walls as compared to all other sides are three to four walls minimal. So by doing that, you can complete the base and that is the finished base. That is the finished product. Inside of your airlock, it may be worth your time to add drop boxes and a shotgun trap. So place two large boxes right here. These don't really matter as we're not doing anything fancy, so you can just throw them in there. And then a shotgun trap may be facing a little bit to the side so it hits the angle if someone does push this. This is very useful because it gives your team the ability to dump and get back out quickly. You can also add them on the jump ups if you like, but I prefer just to keep them clean. At the top of your jump up in your chute that goes straight to the shooting floor, you can add a shotgun trap that watches over this, so you can put it halfway up and have it watch down, so that way if someone does raid this, it shoots them when they're going to climb up. And I also suggest placing a shotgun trap facing out of this, as if someone raids this garage door out, it will shoot them when they're attempting to go down. Now this can make it a little tight to squeeze through the ladder, but it also can give you the ability to sit here and watch this door. So if a raider did raid this, you can sit on the shotgun trap and help the shotgun trap kill them, which is a little bit interesting. So let's start furnishing the base overall now. So we've got this storage room down here, basically perfect, but we can go ahead and also add a barbecue and small boxes here if we would like. I prefer to add one right here always, regardless of if I have clan members or not. So this is the most storage you can have here. And then I prefer to put the tier three here in this back corner. So let's go ahead and place tier three right here. You wanna get it up against this wall as tight as possible. So that way the drill press is right against the wall. Then we wanna add a locker against that right here on this corner. And then you can have a fully kitted locker there. Let's get rid of this garage door and we're gonna add an armored double door, which means that the frame needs to be metal. So make sure you upgrade the frame to metal. After you upgrade that to metal, you wanna go ahead and get rid of this sheet metal door Replace it with an armored door that opens inward. Then place a vending machine right behind it. Rotate it so that way the drop box faces you. And then place the vending machine as close to the door as you can. And disable broadcasting. This works really good because if a raider raids from this side and blows this up, it'll despawn all of the loot. And otherwise, it's just another storage room that you can have down here. Next, you can go ahead and place two beds right here for two of your team members. Place them down so that way the bed at the top of the bed is against this wall. Otherwise, you can get into a little bit of issues jumping into this gap. This can be insanely annoying to some people. So if you are one of those people that are insanely annoyed by that, place only one bed, rotate it so it faces like this, and place it like that. And that will keep it so you can jump into normally. And you could even place the other bed up here or something else. This is free space here that you can place anything you would like. Next, let's go ahead and place a small box underneath the tier three. So back up into the storage room and place it under the tier three. We can also seal off the TC with an HQM window, reinforced window. That just makes the raid even pricier if they raided the door path. That is pretty much everything we can fit there. We can sometimes put a turret or flame turret right here if you really want to. That can kind of cramp the area a little bit with our auto turret, so the flame turret does way better. Currently, Builder Sanctuary is glitched out where flame turrets break upon being placed. 
not really sure what's up with that, but that's why I can't actually place one. You can add bare rugs on both of these ceilings if you wish. So you can have comfort healing in here. I know some people just like to spam those everywhere. You can also add three of them right here. This fits very well. And normally it's at the perfect height to comfort heal you. If you just crouch up and down, you can get in the right spot. Right here, you could place your tier two, tier one, or repair bench, anything that you want right here. For the next floor, we have a garage door replacing the double door we originally had. I generally always keep this furnaces. We have another compact storage room and now we'll go to the next floor where we're going to set up the rest of the storage rooms so this is another hyper efficient loot room here i went ahead and built that one off camera because it just takes a while to build them and they're not really that different for these side room storages just come up to this and go back as far as you can and push this into the corner then place another box close to it here on the side place two small boxes in front of those jump up on the top side and do the same thing over again. Personally, I prefer to not put small boxes on the second floor just because it blocks your ability to grab boxes easily, but you can place one if you really want to. You can place a box and get it all lined up and put it into the back corner. That one's fine because it doesn't block you grabbing, but putting one right here can get annoying to grab around. So on this side, it's the same thing. You can really do these quick if you want to. You don't have to like pay close attention to how you're placing them. You can just place them on down and go. And there you go. That is all of the storage here on the second floor done. Right here, I normally like to put the repair bench because it's right in the entrance, so if you're coming in, you can repair quickly because you can keep some materials in small boxes underneath the repair bench. And then I like to put a locker right across from that on this here because you can still squeeze between the locker and the repair bench and it just gives you more kits and you can repair everything right there and continue on with your day. If you really want to, you could add another locker here as it doesn't block anything either. For the fourth floor, I prefer to do bedrooms and mixing tables. So over here to the left of the ladder room, I prefer to put a bed into this corner facing outwards. It clips the garage door a little bit, but that's fine in my opinion. You could also do a double door so it's a faster open and close, but it does glitch the garage door or door just that little bit so they can tell there's a bed in there. Over here, I like to do another bed in this corner with a locker here. You could potentially fit a bed in a sleeping bag here if you wanted two respawns available, but a sleeping bag has a really bad timer on it. In this room, I usually just put two mixing tables and then I place two on this one as well. Now this restricts movement so you can place three, but I like to place two like this and then place one over here as well. You can also choose to move this one over here and just not have one so you keep your flowing area. That's probably the best idea. Inside the shooting floor room, I prefer to put the battery and electricity here. Depending on how wild you want to get with this, you can keep it really simple or you can stuff a lot of batteries in there. Generally, I prefer to put one battery and then wire up a couple turrets. Sometimes I change up how I put my turrets down, but I normally put one right here. I'm blocked from placing one because of the garage door. But there we go, now I can place one. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth on electrical, but I will give you the simple idea of how electrical works. So we'll place a smart switch and we'll place two branches. We can apparently connect this branch into this one. Oh, no, it's placing on the side of it. I actually didn't know that was possible. I've never done that, I guess. So I'm um, going to place that beside it. So now let's go ahead and go up top. Oops, didn't mean to hit that. Grab from the windmill, and we'll just go ahead and connect this down. You'd have to build up and all that fancy stuff. But I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to fly down in here. And I'm going to connect the windmill straight to the battery. No, no fancy stuff. Nothing at all. Just straight from the windmill, straight to the battery. From the battery, I'm going to keep this wiring a little bit clean, even though... I don't really do my wiring that clean, to be honest. I'm gonna take the output from the switch and take it into the root 
or the branch, sorry, not a root combiner, the electrical branch. So all we've done, connected the windmill to a battery and the battery to a switch and then to this electrical branch. Now on the electrical branch, you have the power out and you have the branch out. If I flip the switch on, we can see that the power out is 96 and the branch out is two. So the best way to do this is to press E on it and configure this to 10. Now 10 is what it takes to power a turret. So we're just gonna run this along the ground and go ahead and place it in the turret. Now the turret will turn on and be powered and we'll take this branch and run it into the other branch. And we can now see that there's 85 power going out and 80 or two power going out. So this would go to the next branch or so on. And this will set to 10 and we can run it to another turret. So now if we want a turret, like let's say up here on the roof, we faced one like this. If we go in here, I'm not sure why the electrical switch is opening that inventory. That's a glitch on Builder Sanctuary. We can grab the branch there and this wire is gonna be floating. But for demonstration purpose, we connect it there. Now both turrets are powered up. We of course would need a gun in them and all of that, but that is very basic electricity. We can see that the battery is charging and it is still charging while the turrets are running. I know this video was a little bit of a long one, so if you guys liked it and liked the base, be sure to leave a like and comment below if you thought I went too fast or too slow on building, or if it was just right and you could follow along perfectly. And with that, that'll be the end of this episode, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.